The drawing guide is an absolutely fantastic feature, which I use to create some pretty cool realism art in Procreate. So let's jump in, see how I use it and see why you should be using it as well. In this video, I'm gonna show you a realism piece I created in Procreate recently. We're gonna have a look at the statistics, how long it took me to create and how many brush strokes I used. And we're gonna break down exactly how I use the drawing guide or a grid overlay system to draw from reference. So let's jump into the iPad and jump into Procreate. As we can see here, this is a piece I just finished. I'm an absolutely massive horror fan and this is my first tip. If you do wanna start drawing realism or any other style that you're not usually used to drawing, pick something that you like the topic of. This may seem really basic, but if you have an interest in it, you are more likely gonna stick with that piece. Believe me, I've learned the hard way. Now, I finished this piece here, but I wanna show you exactly how long it took me to create. I think it's good to share these type of things. On the very top left-hand side of the screen, we have our actions tab, little wrench tool there. We're gonna tap on that. We're gonna make sure we have canvas selected across that top menu. And then at the very bottom, we have canvas information. Let's tap on this. And then there's a little menu on the left-hand side of the screen. We're gonna tap on statistics at the bottom of that one. In this section, you're gonna be able to see the specific statistics of the artwork you're currently in, in Procreate. Here you can see I've taken 8,736 brush strokes to create this piece for a track time of seven hours and 53 minutes with a whopping file size of 1.6 gigabytes. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's a pretty big file size. And I did make a video on this recently about making really high quality pieces. So check out the link at the top of the screen if you do wanna see that video. But the main reason for this large file size is my time-lapse settings. Because I record at such a high quality, if I do wanna share those in the future, it does increase that file size quite significantly. But anyway, let's hit done at the top of the screen. And from here, I'm gonna show you how I set up my reference with a grid over the top and then draw from that reference. So I'm gonna open up my layers and then I'm going to press and hold on the checkbox at the top. It's just a group of layers that don't have anything on them. So I can show you what it would look like over a blank canvas. All right, from here, we're gonna tap on our actions tab again on the very top left. And as long as we have canvas selected again, we're gonna see halfway down that list, we have our drawing guide there. We're gonna to toggle that on and we're gonna see a grid that appears on our artwork. This is exactly what we want. Now, if it's looking pretty good to you already, you might be able to leave it at that, but more than likely your grid's gonna be showing really, really small squares. This isn't ideal for the process I'm about to show you. So what we can do is we can tap on edit drawing guide. This is great because at the bottom here, we have all these options to change the size, color and opacity of the grid that's over the top, as well as the type of grid as well. But for this, we definitely want a 2D grid. But from there, it's up to you about what color, what opacity and what size you want. Now let's talk about size. We definitely don't want the squares too small and we also don't want them too large. This is gonna be something you're gonna get to learn over the time of doing this technique. But for me, on an A3, A4 size piece of paper, these sort of dimensions you can see on the screen here, I like about nine or 10 squares across the top. So I like to adjust my grid to that. And then when I'm happy, I can hit done at the top. Perfect, we have our grid overlay or our drawing guide set up. From here, we're gonna import a photo of the reference we want. So go ahead and find one of those. And then when you have one, we're gonna tap on the actions tab again. We're gonna tap on add, and then we're gonna tap on insert photo. From there, it's gonna bring up your photo gallery. And all we have to do is tap on the photo we want and it's gonna import it into the canvas. I originally chose this image here and I really wanted to focus on Jason. So what I did is I enlarged it quite a bit and I really wanted to focus on getting him in the shot. And it was probably something close to this that I worked with originally. Once we're happy with that, we can tap on the little arrow tool at the top there and it's gonna set that image in place. From here, we're gonna do a screenshot on our iPad. We simply have to hit the up arrow and sleep wake button exactly the same time. And that's going to do a screenshot. And then we can tap on the screenshot on the bottom left because we're gonna adjust those parameters. We wanna use the toggles on either side here to drag it into the exact edges of that piece of art. And then we're gonna hit done on the top left, save to photos. That's now been saved to your photo gallery. We can jump back into our layers now, remove that, and we should be left with a blank canvas with a grid overlay on the top. So what just happened there? We have a reference image, we overlaid a grid, and then we save that photo for a very specific reason. Before we start drawing, we're gonna tap on our actions tab again. We're gonna tap on canvas, and we're gonna tap on reference. Once reference is open, we can import that image into the reference window here. We're gonna tap on image, and then we're gonna tap on import, and then we're gonna select it. It's gonna be the last photo in our camera roll. And then there we go. I have a grid that matches my grid in Procreate. I have the image that I wanna draw. And from here, I can start using these points of reference 
to create an image on my canvas here in Procreate. I'll show you exactly what I mean. If I tap on the actions tab, tap on video and tap on time-lapse replay, you can see here I've created these points of reference as I go along to make sure I've got those proportions right. By no means am I cheating, I'm just using this reference to try and train myself about how to do realism. Again, this is only my third realism piece and I want to get better. So this way is going to allow me to use that grid system and make sure all those points are set in place and I can work on all the other important details like the shading and lighting and everything like that. As you can see here, I definitely took my time on this. I got in with the smudge tool and really wanted to make sure that glowing of the mask was right. And more importantly, those really black shadows at the bottom of the mask and the top of the t-shirt were really set in place. I can put my finger on the screen now and drag across that time lapse and you'll see that I work piece by piece as I go. And every time I'm looking back at that reference, the reference in the drawing guide really is only used primarily at the start of the piece when we are gonna be getting the framework in place. But I definitely went back in later when there were these holes here on the mask to try and get them in the right area because it was a bit tricky as the mask was curving. Drag all the way through to the end of the time lapse and there we go. If we open our layers and hold back on that checkbox on the layer that we originally soloed, it's gonna bring all the other layers back. And then if we do wanna remove the grid from there, we can tap on the actions tab, tap on canvas and tap on drawing guide again. And we can also tap on reference to remove that. And then we're left with the piece of art we created. I absolutely love the drawing guide. I found it really, really useful when I did start focusing on realism, but I'll be honest with you, there's probably a lot of other art that could really benefit from using this type of system as well. And this is actually the same system I use when I create murals. I like to take a photo of the wall that I'm gonna be creating. I like to put a grid over the top, draw over that grid, and then it's an easy way to transfer it onto the wall. I highly encourage anyone out there who's not using Drawing Guide already to give it a go, experiment with it. You're gonna love it. It's absolutely fantastic. And let me know in the comments if you already do use it or if you're excited to start using this great feature. If you like today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything at all, but it does help me grow my channel and bring in these videos each and every week. And until the next video, I'll catch you then. Thank you.